Welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to be talking about the snake hook. This is a fun one. So go ahead and open up Blender and do new file general. And let's go ahead and save as. We'll just call it snake hook and save. And now let's set up Suzanne for sculpting. So we'll just turn on our matte caps if you want to. Boop. And let's add some resolution with the multi resolution. And I'm just going to subdivide it, you know, four or five times whatever your computer can handle today. And now let's switch on over into sculpting mode with control tab down and let's get our snake brush. So this is the snake hook and it does kind of what the picture looks like. It will just, you know, when you click and drag, it will just make little snake hooks like that. Um, notice that it's got the radius and the strength is already set to one. And if we go to our tools, we've got auto smooth and we've got a new one called magnify and rake. So let's just first just start playing with this. So if you you know hit F and maybe increase your brush and just kind of go from the side here and click and drag, notice we've got some you know little snake hooks that appear. You can even increase your brush, maybe grab the ear over here and just click and drag. And notice you can do some pretty cool, insanely uh, curvaceous and spiky looking things uh, with this tool. So I use it a lot when I'm just making spikes on things, but you could get pretty creative if you just need something to be, you know, like a tail or something to come out of your design. You could use this to give it kind of like a natural or kind of organic flowy look to it. Like, woo. -hoo. And notice here, so when I pulled out for this snake hook and went really far, you can see the geometry is starting to really get messed up. And that's because we're stretching it really, really, really far really fast. So I want to show you another technique that you can use for sculpting. Um, it's very, very, very destructive, uh, but I'm going to show you in later videos, you know, when and where to use this technique. But I think for the snake hook, this is a fun one to just play around with. So what I want you to do is go ahead and delete your multi-res. So notice when we delete this multi-res modifier, our Suzanne is going to go back to normal, you know, because it's non-destructive. It's not actually doing anything to our original design here. But if we wanted to turn on this Dyn Topo, this is just a dynamic topology. So when you check this box, um, it's going to do something a little bit different uh, to our model here. And again, it is very destructive. So I don't really want you to get into the habit of using this um, because it will destroy your models. So go ahead and check that box and you should get some type of error. It's saying, ah, warning, vertex data detected. And that's okay. You could always just hit okay. But what that's saying is that inside of our little vertex data here, um, there's some type of either vertex group or key shapes or UV maps that are present. So it's actually going to disable those. So if you want that warning to not show up, just, you know, delete your UV map. And then when you click that, bloop, notice it just turns on and it doesn't really look like anything has happened at, you know, by the just first glance. But if we switch into wireframe, so everybody click on your little drop down here, go to geometry wireframe. Notice we've got some subdivision and a lot of triangles on our mesh here. And again, we do not have our multi-resolution. So this is without the most multi-resolution modifier at all. Um, this is just applying geometry to any model. So watch what happens if we, say for example, if we use the draw tool, when I click and drag, it's creating new geometry. It is a dynamic topology. So this is very useful when just sculpting out your base model. And we'll get all into this, when and where and why to use it, like I said. But what I want you to do is maybe change it to uh, relative detail. The, the lower you go, the more detailed it's going to be. So let's say if we did five and we click and drag, notice the, the little triangles are going to be tighter and tighter together. So now that we have this, let's go to our snake hook and see the difference. So let's just click and drag anywhere. I'm going to grab right here on this point here and just click and drag out. Notice now the geometry is just, it's just creating more geometry as we pull these out. So it really, it lends itself really, really helpful uh, for the snake hook. You're not running out of geometry like we did with the multi-resolution. Um, it's just creating more and more and more geometry as you need it. So there's pluses and minuses to this. Um, 
but I just wanted to show you that this is another type of sculpting option. Um, so let's go ahead and look at magnify and rake. So magnify is going to magnify the kind of the points that are coming off here. So notice as you click and drag, the points get really, really small. That's because our magnify is turned to, you know, is set to half. But say if we wanted to create like a neck or something for Suzanne, we could increase this magnify to one and then click and drag from the neck down and notice it stays constant. It's not getting smaller as we pull this, you know, geometry down. Same thing the other way. If I just turn the magnify all the way down, the spikes or the snake hooks are going to get really sharp really fast. That's the difference between the magnify. So let's just reset that back to default, which is 0.5. And the rake option here is supposed to determine, you know, how how closely your, you know, your your snake hooks follow the rotation of the cursor. I don't really see that big of a difference, but say if we were to click and drag something out and curve it a lot, you know, that's with rake all the way turned to one. And if we turn it down and click and drag something over on this side and, you know, click and drag, it's not really following the mouse rotation as heavy. So, uh, you know, I don't really use it that often, but that's what those two do. So I'm just gonna leave it up at one. And yeah, play around with the snake tool. This one is really fun, really crazy. Again, so we did show you how to use it with the multi-res modifier. And then we also turn that off and use the dynamic topology, which is, gives us a lot more freedom uh, when using the snake hook, uh, but it is very destructive. So notice if we go into edit mode, all of this geometry here is, you know, this is what Suzanne looks like now. There is no going back to the original design here. You know, there's no modifier to delete. So, you know, be very, very careful when you use the dynamic topology little icon there. Uh, but, uh, you know, I just wanted to show you uh, that for this lesson because I thought it kind of lended itself to some dynamic topology. So look at there. We already had a super crazy Suzanne. And um, yeah, hope you had a lot of fun with this brush. And let's go into the next brush, which is the thumb brush.